I need to head back to my hometown for a while. Can you watch over my house while I'm away? I asked Nancy, James' wife, with a bit of hesitation. You don't have to come back at all, even if you're my husband's mom. I don't want to live with some stranger, some old lady, she replied, showing her disrespect. Seriously? Whose house does she think this is? Besides, it's too big for Linda to live in alone, right? We'll take care of it, so don't worry. We'll change the locks, so it won't matter if you come back. Too bad. Ever since I moved in with James and Nancy, her behavior has been terrible. I've had enough. Fine, I won't come back here anymore. Really? Yes, really. Just do whatever you want from now on. I, Linda, harbor a secret side that even James isn't aware of. What would Nancy make of it if she found out? Quietly, I packed my things and left the house. My name's Linda. I've been on my own since my husband Thomas passed away three years back. At 57, I tied the knot with Thomas, a co-worker of the same age, when I was just 24. We didn't have much money, but we had spirit, I suppose. We were just young and full of hope. Soon after our wedding, I discovered I was expecting and gave birth to James the following year. After my maternity leave, I threw myself into both work and raising our child. We entertained the idea of having another baby, but finances just wouldn't allow it then. Thomas hailed from a wealthy family, yet he adamantly refused their help. He had a strained relationship with his father and left home, almost like a runaway. Maybe out of that same stubbornness, James, as serious-minded as his dad, graduated from college and snagged a job at a prestigious company. He excelled professionally and was highly regarded, but his personal life struggled, remaining single well into his thirties. We tied the knot young, full of vigor, but it seemed we didn't follow in our parents' footsteps in that regard. James, when will I get to meet my grandkid? That was Thomas's constant refrain. While our marriage might have been early, it was unusual to find someone in their thirties with no dating history like James. In our time, Folks always had tales of their weekend companions. Looking back, it was a more carefree era. Thomas eagerly awaited James settling down, but he passed away suddenly two years ago, never seeing it happen, taken by a sudden heart attack. By the time he reached the hospital, it was too late. Overwhelmed by sorrow, I quit my job and stayed home. Luckily, Thomas's insurance covered the rest of the mortgage, and I had my retirement savings, so finances weren't an immediate concern. The house we lived in was newly built, purchased when we were nearly 30, brimmy with memories of Thomas. After his passing, James and I agreed to transfer Thomas's share to me, splitting the house wasn't feasible, and I planned to eventually pass it on to James. When I broached the subject with him, he confessed out of the blue, I found someone I want to marry. I was taken aback. What? You had a girlfriend? Why keep it from me? Dad was waiting all this time. I meant to tell you, but the right moment never seemed to come. Sorry. It was ironic that Thomas, who had eagerly awaited James's marriage, was no longer with us. The following weekend, James brought his partner to our house. Mom, let me introduce you. This is Nancy. Nice to meet you. I'm Nancy, she said, dressed flamboyantly and seeming quite mismatched for James, who had led a serious life until then. Still, I remarked, you seem cheerful and kind, don't you? I trusted that if James chose her despite her appearance, her character must be decent. Nancy glanced around our home, scrutinizing everything. I felt a bit uneasy. Is everything okay? You seem deep in thought, I asked Nancy. Oh, nothing. Just taking it all in. So this is where James grew up. By the way, Mom, there's something else I'd like to discuss. James began. What is it? James proposed skipping the wedding ceremony and just registering the marriage. Since his one-bedroom apartment was too small, he asked if they could live with me. I don't mind. But are you comfortable with that, Nancy? I inquired, though secretly thrilled at the thought of not being alone in this big house since Thomas passed away. Nancy, are you okay with staying here? For a moment, Nancy seemed a tad displeased, but it passed quickly. Soon she smiled and replied, Of course. I've always dreamed of living in a house rather than an apartment. See, Mom. Nancy agrees, so please, how could I refuse my dear James' request? Plus, I had my own worries about living alone. Having the young couple around would liven up the house and perhaps eventually bring grandchildren. I hope this would gradually fill the void left by Thomas's absence. It's okay, James. This is your home, and Nancy, please treat it as yours. I agree to their arrangement. However, 
Nancy's occasional rude comments troubled me. Once we started living together, my suspicions were confirmed. Linda, I'm quite busy, so could you handle all the meals and cleaning? Nancy asked as we were still unpacking. And the bath preparations too, please. Pretty please. She treated me like a maid. But I endured it for the sake of harmony with James and his wife. Yet, the workload of running a household is vastly different for a single person than for a grown adult. Linda, my lingerie is delicate, so be sure to hand wash it. Why can't she do it herself if she's so particular? Even I couldn't suppress my frustration. So, I waited for an opportunity to talk to James when Nancy wasn't around. I had to bring it up abruptly, not wanting to upset him. Hey James, could you maybe suggest to Nancy to share some of the housework? When I broached the topic, Nancy's never really done any housework, but she appreciates how meticulously you handle things, Mom, he replied. Anyhow, I'll talk to her about it. Let's try to get along, okay? James seemed to be attempting to reconcile Nancy and me. From that moment on, Nancy's attitude towards me deteriorated further. Why isn't our room tidy? There's dust everywhere. Can't you clean your own space? There might be things we don't want touched. What are you implying, Linda? You're such a homemaker, always at home, right? It's like you're mooching off James. Can you at least pitch in with the housework? I muttered, feeling a weight of resentment building. If anyone's leeching off James, it's me. Nancy's the one draining the life out of this place. I'd endured everything because she was James' wife, taking care of them both. But I hit my breaking point. One day, my sister called. We were all grown, both my sister and brother married, with no one left at our parents' house. Dad passed away when I was in school and Mom, who lived alone, also passed a few years ago. We didn't want to leave the house empty, so we put it up for sale, and we finally found a buyer. We needed to sort out our parents' house. If James and his wife hadn't come to stay with me, maybe I would have ended up alone too. But even so, if Nancy keeps this up, I won't be able to handle it. Maybe it's best to take a break. With James away on a business trip, I approached Nancy that night after she came out of the bath. Can we talk? I asked tentatively. If it's something annoying, I don't want to hear it, she replied lazily. I need to go back to my parents' house for a while. It might be for some time, so I need you to look after the house. And about the housework during that time? You're not expecting me to do it, are you? She snapped in annoyance. Seems like that's the plan. What do you think? I prodded for her reaction. This is your family home, right? You don't have to come back. I mean, it was nice that you did so much. But I hated living with some old lady who's practically a stranger. This is perfect. Nancy's rudeness, thinking James wasn't around, was blatant. Sure, it's a bit old-fashioned, but this house is too big for just you, right? We'll make use of it, so don't worry. Maybe we should change the locks then. You can't get in even if you come back, she added casually. I was stunned. I tolerated her behavior because she was James's wife, taking care of them both. But I'd reached my limit. Got it. I won't be coming back, so do as you please. Really? Are you serious? Yay. I returned to my room, packing not just for this trip, but to make it easier for the movers. As the time arrived and I slipped an envelope into my trunk, I knew it was something I couldn't leave behind. The next morning, loaded with luggage and memories, I departed from the house and wrote to my parents' home. I arranged for movers to transport my belongings. They would be stored temporarily until I secured a new place. Strolling down the familiar path, I spotted my parents' house in a distance. Though vacant, it appeared fairly well kept thanks to my nearby sister's regular upkeep. Together with my sister and brother, we reminisced while meticulously tidying every corner of the house. Maintaining an empty house proved challenging, hence selling it seemed the most practical. Retrieving the envelope from my trunk, I dialed the real estate agent's number inscribed on it. With the utilities of the house disconnected, we lodged at a nearby hotel during the cleanup. On the third day of tidying, I returned to my hotel room, eager for a shower. My phone buzzed incessantly, but I ignored it, immersed in the water. Yet the persistent calls drew my attention. Reviewing the call history, I noticed all the missed calls were from Nancy's phone. Glancing at the screen, yet another call from Nancy flashed. Hey, what's up? Why the constant calls? Despite knowing the reason, I intentionally adopted a particular tone. So the movers whisked away all your stuff yesterday, but you're not seriously considering leaving for good, are you? What do you mean? Weren't you the one who said, don't come back? 
or have you conveniently forgotten? I retorted with a touch of mischief. You old hag, Linda. You're our maid, so come back right now. Being told to get out and then come back was rather self-serving. Sorry, but I'll pass. Perhaps boiling with rage, Nancy even referred to me as a maid. Oh, I forgot to mention. I'm planning to rent out that house, and I've already contacted a real estate agent. So, Nancy, you'll need to find a new place soon. What do you mean? We're living here. You can't just do that. Nancy's voice quivered, perhaps in bewilderment. I own that house. Like you said, it's too big for one person. I've been contemplating renting it out for some time to boost my income. Unless you and James want to become tenants, that's fine by me. You greedy old woman. Are you that desperate for money? Nancy seemed to have misunderstood. But I'm not strapped for cash. Fortunately, I have other properties. They generate income for me, so I'm financially secure. I just saw this as an opportunity to straighten things out. The envelope I brought from the house contained the deeds to my properties. Thomas had left them to me in case of emergencies. Initially belonging to Thomas's father, they were passed down to Thomas when his parents passed away. Thomas hadn't informed me about this, and I only discovered these assets through his will penned before his demise. I had intended to gradually reveal this to James over time, but Nancy's arrival as his wife completely deterred me. Then make arrangements for us to stay here. You're the landlord, right? Nancy's voice echoed with anguish. That's why I said if you two pay rent, there shouldn't be an issue, right? That's enough. I'll explain everything to James when he returns from his business trip. With that, she abruptly ended the call. I pondered what she might disclose to James. A few days later, James rang. Hi, Mom. You vacated the house, and now you're asking us to leave too. But isn't this our family home? I simply mentioned I had matters to attend to and requested you to house sit but Nancy insisted I shouldn't return, and I couldn't bear it any longer. What? What are we supposed to do? I informed Nancy about my plan to rent out the place, so all you need to do is pay rent if that's feasible. Following my statement, James fell silent. Actually, I've recently changed jobs, James confessed straightforwardly. Since when? Just before our wedding. I haven't disclosed this to Nancy. I was taken aback. I had believed James was flourishing in his prestigious job, but he had been grappling with such issues. Generally, switching jobs is a significant life event. Shouldn't you inform your partner about your intentions to marry first? Why keep her in the dark? I was apprehensive, he admitted. He revealed that when they started dating, Nancy was pleased to hear he worked at a top company. With limited dating experience until his 30s, James lacked the courage to divulge the truth to the first person he considered marrying. I'm now working at a startup I established with some college buddies, and it seems we're on the brink of success. Mom, please lend me your support. James, devoid of siblings, sought my assistance. I wanted to offer my support, but James needed to take responsibility as an adult and a spouse. Life would only become more challenging if he didn't come clean and seek understanding from his partner. James, you're capable of sorting out your own affairs. Once you've done that, I'll assist as much as I can as your parent. Understand. After delivering that message, I ended the call, feeling a bit too stern. I resolved to have a conversation with both of them. A week after returning to my family home and completing the clearing out, I commended my sister and brother on their efforts. Well done. Let's plan to meet up again when we have more time, I suggested, intending to return home for the time being. Ah, Linda, welcome back. I've been expecting you. Nancy greeted me in a sugary tone as I arrived home. Notice you didn't change the locks. Change your mind. I retorted with a touch of sarcasm. Where's James? He's here, isn't he? James emerged from the back, looking visibly drained. Did you talk to Nancy properly? I inquired, to which Nancy appeared clueless. It seems you haven't told her, James admitted, disclosing that he had left his job to start a venture business with a friend. What? Is that all? I agreed to marry you because you were a promising employee at a top company. If not for that, I wouldn't have bothered with a gloomy guy like you, James. Nancy unexpectedly revealed her true feelings. So that's how Nancy truly feels. In that case, we have no choice but to end this. James sighed as he spoke. I thought we were getting along well with Mom but Nancy, you were just using her as a replacement housekeeper. This old hag, she's only good for housework, right? 
What's wrong with that? Nancy crudely remarked. How could you speak to mom like that? Can't you just leave? I don't even want to see your face anymore. I don't need to see either. You deceived me, remember? I'll take legal action against you. With that, Nancy stormed out of the house. Are you sure this is the right decision? It's okay. Nancy never really cared for me from the beginning, James remarked. Yet his demeanor betrayed the bitterness of a man who felt betrayed. Subsequently, James and Nancy finalized their divorce. Nancy accused James of withholding information about his job change and sought alimony, alleging deception. However, it emerged that Nancy had quit her job and was engaging in secret rendezvous with a lover during the day. This led to a settlement where both parties shared the pain. I wanted some recompense for the verbal abuse and being treated like a maid, but I didn't want to stir up trouble, so I let it slide. I heard Nancy rush back to her parents' house in tears, only to be scolded by them for her calculated marriage and divorce. They refused to let her return. Apparently, her parents were sensible folks. I also learned that Nancy had a strained relationship with them. In the end, Nancy, unwelcome at home, is scraping by, hopping from one part-time job to another. Maybe I just have a poor judgment of character, but I think I'm done with marriage. It's just too much hassle, James remarked, half in jest, half seriously. As planned, we rented out the original house, and James and I are now living separately. However, I found a suitable property among the inherited real estate, so we're using it as our respective residences. Some might call it extravagant, but I opted to sell off some of the properties and invest in James' business. I chose to believe in James's sincere plea to dedicate himself to his venture. Perhaps his marriage will have to wait until his business finds stability. As his mother, all I can do is hope he encounters the right person when the time is right.